Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. Uh, this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that milk and other dairy products are bad for your health. Uh, so first, where did this idea come from? Uh, well, I think the bulk of these claims come from one of two main arguments. Uh, the first and, in my opinion, weakest argument is that there's just something unnatural about adults drinking milk, especially since humans are reportedly uh, the only animal that drinks the milk of another animal. Um, first of all, that premise is actually not correct. Um, for for example, feral cats and western gulls have been shown to steal milk from elephant seals in nature. Um, but even if it were true, uh, even if we were the only species to drink the milk of another animal, whether or not regular milk consumption occurs elsewhere in nature has nothing to do with its effect on our health. I mean, I think basing our diets on what other animals are eating could lead to some pretty unhealthy or strange nutritional recommendations. And of course, just because something is natural doesn't mean it's good. Cyanide and apple seeds will kill you if you eat enough of them, uh, despite being natural, and man-made antibiotics will save your life if you need them, despite being unnatural. So needless to say, this isn't a good argument against dairy consumption. Um, another thing anti-dairy advocates make a big deal out of is milk's supposed acidic, as opposed to alkalizing effect on the body. Um, however, this also doesn't stand up against the scientific evidence, since as pointed out by Alan Aragon in a very well-cited NSCA presentation, milk and dairy products don't produce acid upon metabolism. And besides, systemic pH isn't influenced by diet to begin with, and dairy's bone protective effect is supported by the majority of all research. Now, many people will correctly point out that 65 to 75 percent of people do have some sort of lactose intolerance, meaning you'll experience bloating or diarrhea if you drink milk. And the prevalence of this is actually highly dependent on your ancestry. Uh, so it's most common amongst Asians and least common amongst Europeans. Uh, but as I see it, this is less of a strike against dairy per se, and more of just another example of why it's important to monitor your individual response to different foods. Um, if you consistently find that dairy gives you digestive issues, then it'd be smart to consider doing some sort of elimination diet to figure out if it is in fact the dairy that's causing the problem, and then you'll want to consider limiting its consumption uh, according to your own tolerance. Uh, so what does the actual scientific research have to say about dairy and its effect on health? Uh, well, let's start with a brand new meta-analysis published just last year, looking at 29 studies totaling over 700,000 participants, uh, which found no associations between dairy and milk consumption and all-cause mortality or total deaths, coronary heart disease, or cardiovascular disease, which is in agreement with several other meta-analyses. I think a perfectly reasonable critique of this study is that it is funded by the Global Dairy Platform and the Dairy Council, and I think that funding bias is a serious problem in the scientific community, especially in the case of pharmaceutical funding. Now, we could just take the author's published word and the nod of the peer reviewers that the funders had no role in the study design or data collection, uh, but while funding bias can't discredit a otherwise well-designed study on its own, I think it should give us pause and encourage us to look at other data, especially independently funded research, uh, to see if the same results are replicated. And as it turns out, these same basic findings have been replicated elsewhere, including in a 2015 meta-analysis, which had no funding conflicts of interest. And this further adds to the pool of evidence showing no association between milk consumption and mortality. Now, when it comes to cancer, uh, the data is a little bit more mixed. According to one excellent 2016 review, you can see here in the figure that they looked at pretty much every health outcome related to dairy, and the labeling is a bit confusing, but basically the down arrows actually indicate a favorable health effect from drinking milk. Now the sideways arrow means a neutral effect, and the up arrow means a bad effect. And importantly, four different cancers were all positively impacted from dairy intake. And then a bunch of stuff showed a neutral effect. So as we said, mortality, and then these three other cancers over here. And in fact, the only bad outcome was for prostate cancer risk, and even this was actually neutral to adverse depending on the data set that you're looking at. Um, so this led the authors to conclude that the benefit of the protective effect of milk and dairy on the common and serious colorectal cancer is judged to outweigh a potentially increased risk in prostate cancer. And that of course isn't to mention the other six cancers that dairy had a positive or neutral impact on. Now I think it's important to recognize that all the data we've looked at so far has been correlational. Um, so it is possible that confounding variables are skewing the results. Uh, so for example, it's possible that the people who tend to to drink more milk, also just tend to have more nutritious diets overall. And while I think future research can help discern these issues according to the weight of the current evidence, I think milk should still be considered a nutritious beverage that you can include in your diet, especially considering just how rich it is in protein, minerals like calcium and potassium, and vitamins like 
vitamin A and B12. And that's not to mention its other benefits like increasing muscle mass and improving satiety. Uh, so just before we wrap this one up, I wanna quickly comment on the link between dairy and acne. Now, there's not much data on this, uh, but one 2017 systematic report concluded that milk and foods with a high glycemic burden are the best candidates for food triggered influence. However, it's not currently possible to set out evidence-based nutritional recommendations for preventing acne. Uh, a later paper published this year also found a positive relationship between dairy consumption and acne occurrence, uh, but this didn't apply to yogurt or cheese. Um, so I'd say that when it comes to skin health, the data is extremely limited, uh, but again, similar to individual instances of lactose intolerance, you'll have to assess your response on an individual basis and just consider doing an elimination diet to see if it is in fact the milk or something else that's worsening your skin condition. So to wrap this up, I would say that the idea that milk is bad for your health is busted. Um, considering that the research shows almost entirely neutral or beneficial effects from drinking milk, uh, with of course individual exceptions in the case of lactose intolerance or acne, um, the argument that otherwise healthy individuals should avoid milk is not supported by the scientific evidence. And that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, before we go, I wanna give a huge thank you to Squarespace for again, sponsoring another Myth Bust Monday video. Uh, many of you guys will know that I just launched my new Fundamentals Hypertrophy program on my website. And this was all done through Squarespace's website and online store platform, uh, which I found to be extremely helpful in setting up and launching this program, as well as tracking the analytics. Um, so as you can see, if you visit my website, I think they have really nice custom templates and amazing 24 hour customer support, uh, which I'll always use if I run into any issues. Um, so if you wanna get started with your own website or running your own online store, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. Um, so thank you Squarespace so much for supporting the channel and the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit up the link to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll have another video over here of my last myth bust video covering how much water you really need to drink in a day if you'd like to check that out. And I will see you guys all here next Monday.